To meet the climate challenge in the next 10 years, we cannot rely on incremental measures. We can't just push harder on what we're doing today. We really have to take a systems view and look for opportunities where we can start to trigger events that will deliver positive reinforcements, feedbacks, changes of the sort that we've seen with the growth of wind, solar, the steep declines in prices for emerging technologies that come from globally scaled manufacturing. When we think particularly about those areas where different parts of the energy system come together, like in cities where people drive and people live in and work in buildings uh, and it's all powered by electricity, that's exactly where we need collective action because every sector has to work together to come up with solutions that are viable. If we are to make massive scale change across the world, we really need to learn from each other and really need to learn to share that data and act quickly. You know, the time for over analysis and each of us doing our individual parallel analysis is just too slow. And not just data on climate, but also data on successful transportation models, on how can private industry in chemicals and manufacturing, how can we share that data to make the solutions that we need much more quickly. India's leadership in clean energy will come essentially from the frugal innovation that will happen in India. Cost-effective, clean solutions that India has the ability to innovate and get on ground is something that I feel will be replicable and scalable beyond India to developing countries and markets. In order for us to solve climate change, the first thing that needs to happen is for the electricity sector to take over the energy sector. Electricity at this point has the clearest path to being zero carbon itself, or close to zero carbon. That's the first thing, is making sure that we electrify everything. Declaring a climate emergency for us as a city is really much beyond what we in a, as an organization can do. We're $1.5 billion annual budget, we have 10,000 staff, and we can't do this by ourselves. We need the business community, the nonprofit community, and then empowering them and engaging them to do more in their own lives. participating in Emerge because the urgency is there, because we do have solutions. We're running five programs out of NYU, out of my incubator there. One is the business incubator that has incubated 57 companies over the last 10 years that have market-ready solutions to controlling the grid, to EV technology, to building energy efficiency, to data analytics, all of these things that can help the problem. And as we move forward, we must all move forward together. We should not think of this as a competitive endeavor. It makes me happy to help young entrepreneurs to succeed and to get watts off the grid and GHG out of the atmosphere every day. Beyond the power sector, I think we need to look at the industry sector. Um, it's great to see that is a focus area of the Seven Challenges report. We have to think about the way that we make all the stuff that we use in society and make sure that we're doing that without releasing greenhouse gas emissions. And there's incredible innovation demonstrating that it's possible to make steel and cement and chemicals without emitting greenhouse gas emissions and still getting the same level of service. On the industry side, there's some really interesting policies that have been emerging around buying clean products. Government procurement programs create a sheltered market for zero carbon industrial goods in the same way that 
you know, 20 or 30 years ago, we were creating a sheltered market for renewable energy technologies. Clean energy access and to democratize generation and consumption of clean energy by the poor people is what we really call the democratization and to build the whole energy transition based on equity and inclusiveness. And that inclusivity is really going to be the game changer for us in the future. I'm just inspired by how quickly this movement has taken off. It's, it's amazing to see how many people are talking about it, how important it is to people in their daily lives. And we had a, a march at City Hall, a climate strike, 100,000 kids and their families there. And it was just really, really inspiring to see the next generation is picking up on this and taking it to the next level. We, we gotta keep going, like, we, we really need to do this.